Comics Presents, Warner Premiere Comics Presents, Superman, Great Sun. Here he is again, standing on the company. Temple. I had made quite an impression in the 14 weeks since I made my journey from the farmlands to Moscow. So, evidently Superman, it shows right here how he arrived as a baby in the farmlands and he grew up and now he's in Moscow and you see the sightseeing of Russia basically and you see some soldiers with Russian symbols on their shoulder and parts of Russia in this cartoon as Superman is the one that's speaking evidently some still thought me a trick of the light or an urban myth but each new day saw another super some death-defying rescue. You see certain scenes of Superman saving people's lives during accidents or whatever catastrophe, how he's been a hero back to back continuously to the people of Russia. <laughs> in my more introspective moments, I even wondered if the people were behaving more carelessly in the hope that they might catch a glimpse of their gaudy circus clown. The funny thing is, this is probably how the Russians feel <laughs> about Superman. And all the stuff he saved people in America and all that, even though it's just make believe. But now we're seeing it as if Superman was in Russia. Comrade Secretary, this is a priority alert. We have lost control of Sputnik 2, and the satellite is plummeting towards Earth's atmosphere. Now you see some Pentagon looking military pre uh, preparation room and all that, the situation room, and all the big screens on the walls, and they have the computers. And it shows the world map with all the countries and some, uh, looks like nuclear missiles going from one country to the other. So something happened, and I guess Superman is going to go save them. The Americans, they must have sabotaged us. How else could a satellite just change course like that? Flight trajectory looks like it's heading for a populated area somewhere in the upper hemisphere, sir. North of Peru, north of Cuba. Oh, my God. It's coming down in America. They called me a soldier, but that just wasn't true. I was never a soldier. Soldiers always follow orders. So it looks like the satellite that the Russians have electronic um, problems with it. Uh, a few satellites just started falling in random places, and one of them is headed to America. It looks like New York because of skyscrapers or whatever. And I guess the Russian Superman is going to save them. I don't know. A soldier knows and hates his enemy. A soldier only fights and dies for his own people. I just fought for what was right. Sputnik 2 weighed 5,000 pounds. This mass multiplied by an acceleration factor of 100 meters per second would have delivered in force. Now you see Superman, he caught up with the satellite that was going to hit New York and he grabbed it and he's trying to pull it off the course so that way it doesn't hit the city. Powerful enough to level the entire city. In hindsight, I could have vaporized my heat vision. And now you can see Superman's flight trajectory, and it looks like he managed to curve the path of the satellite, so it landed somewhere else in the water or something, but it, it didn't hit the city. Floated to the tank with my super breath, or even atomized the craft with the calculated blow. Instead, I chose the most exciting action. The powers were still new to me then, you understand. Yeah, I hit the lake or the ocean or something, and there was a boat nearby, and it kind of just tumbled a little bit, but there was no, no damage at all to anything, so he saved the day. Exactly three seconds after hitting the roof of the newspaper office. Now you see the Daily Planet building, 1700. I realized the damage done to the building suspension. And all the people out there nervous that something was going to happen, but nothing happened. A cluster of support cables groaned and snapped. People below. Uh oh, it looks like something hit the damn Daily Planet on the top of the roof. It hit that. There's like a statue of uh, Planet Earth on top of the Daily Planet newspapers building. And something hit the foundation, all the bolts and all the metallic structure, and it's about to fall down, I guess. Oh, screamed for someone to save them. Not my people. But I never refuse a cry for help. And now the people are. Screaming, nervous, scared, and then Superman comes out of the ocean. 
And I think he's gonna rescue them from that falling piece of metal. All the lies they spread about me, the propaganda they engineered at the height of the Cold War. Yep, here comes that big metallic racket and it's gonna fall on people running away and then as it's heading down the building from high up there, everyone's running away from where it's gonna fall but there's a mother and her kid and the kid's holding a balloon and he, you can see the shadow of the falling object about to hit both of them. None of it mattered for a while on that bright afternoon. Okay, so the mother is hugging the baby and she's scared like they're going to die together. And you see they're sitting right under the shadow of the giant object. And the kid is scared, hugs his mama, and he let go of the little red balloon he was holding. Just for a single moment, they realize. And here comes Superman, slowly lowering himself down to them. Just to hand the kid his balloon with his right hand, he's flying down, and on his left hand, he's holding the gigantic metallic object that was going to kill the mom and the kid. So I guess he saved him, and he still had enough energy to give the kid back his balloon. I was here to save them. Oh my God. Six million lives spared. So then, yeah, Superman gives the kids back the balloon, and the kids and the mom go away, and then you see, it looks in this scene that Lois Lane witnessed everything, and she says, oh my god, you know, so I don't know if she's going to fall in love with Superman or what, this is a weird universe. And an incident that might have sparked a war, averted, and my most potent memory of that day was five and a half feet tall and wearing Chanel number five. I guess he's talking about Lois Lane, so he's the one that developed a crush on her. She felt it too. I know she did. But neither of us could act on this impulse. Not while she had a gold ring on her third finger and it... And now you see Superman is checking out Lois Lane and Lois Lane was checking out Superman and he's talking what he's talking but he's got x-ray vision and he can see that in one of her hands she has a ring and he can see that inside her purse there's a picture of Lex Luthor who is not bald like in the regular Superman we know. Lex Luthor in this universe has blonde regular hair. He's got like a flat top crew cut. A creased photograph of a somber, red-headed scientist in her purse. Centuries later, after a thousand interpretations of this meeting... Now you see Superman flying away with a giant metallic object. He's probably going to put it back where, on top of the Daily Planet. Roof. I don't know. He's flying up. Famous poet will write an alternate history of the. Okay, yeah, he's welding it to the roof with his X ray vision. The world where Lois Luthor and I became lovers. His story would go on to win the Pulitzer Prize and become the biggest selling fictional book of all time. Even now, I still don't know what appeals to people about this notion, what chord it struck with the public imagination. Now you see Superman flying away from New York because he's already done doing what he had to do. And I don't suppose we ever will in this lifetime. That's the end. Thank you. We'll see you in the next.